The movie begins in Kanchanaburi in 1972, where a couple discusses the illness of their daughter Nart, who is severely ill. Suddenly, they hear Nart scream, prompting them to rush home in alarm. Upon entering the house, Nat emerges from her room, clutching her stomach and complaining of severe pain. Mysterious movements occur within her stomach, which then begins to bloat, followed by blood flowing from every orifice of her body. And then, she eventually dies. After this, we are introduced to Bunyan and her three daughters, Yad, Yam, and Yi. Bunyan instructs them to come straight home after school because their father is planning to take them to a fair. On their way to school, Yad and Yam notice Yi standing in front of a tree, staring intently at something. Yad asks her what she is looking at, but Yi responds with nothing and quickly runs away. Later at school, Yam discovers a frightening sketch and asks Yad whose desk is this, and why would they draw such scary things? She notices the name Narts on it, but Yad snatches the paper from her and hurriedly leads her out of the classroom. On their way back home from school, as they pass by the same tree again, the sisters are terrified to see a scary woman standing underneath it. In panic, they start to run away, but their brother Yod suddenly appears in front of them, giving them another scare. Later, the family, including their parents and brothers Yoz and Yod, visit the fair. They have a lot of fun together, but Yam expresses a wish that their other brother Yak could have been there with them. After a while, Yi notices a scary-looking old woman staring at her, which terrifies her, and she tells Yod that an old woman is pointing at her. When they get off the Ferris wheel, Yam starts feeling unwell and tells Yod that she also saw the old woman. The next day, Yak returns home, bringing joy to his siblings who are thrilled to see him. Later, during dinner, it becomes evident that Yak is a bit rebellious and doesn't adhere to his father's strict rules, much to his father's displeasure. Then Yam tells Yad that she has a headache and asks her to take her to bed. Later that night, Yam wakes up to a sound and discovers that the window is open. In fear, she closes the window and returns to bed, but then the window opens again. This terrifies her even more, but when she looks outside, there is no one there. However, a scary ghost lurks behind her. Soon after, Yad notices Yam heading out of the room, and when she follows her, she finds her sitting in the kitchen. Yad approaches her, asking what she is doing, and just as Yad turns towards her, the radio unexpectedly turns on, which Yam promptly switches off. As Yam turns back, Yad stands behind her, mentioning that she is hungry, and then she returns to her room. After this, when Yad returns to the room, she asks Yam what she just ate. However, suddenly, the room fills with eerie voices, causing Yad to become unconscious. The next day, we witness Hung in an argument with one of his workers named Mun, who wants to quit. Yak steps in and requests his father to allow him to speak with Mun. He approaches Mun and asks what happened, to which Mun tells him that he doesn't want to talk about it, and he requests Yak to take him to the farm so he can complete all the work for the day. He also advises Yak to keep an eye out for his family. Meanwhile, when Yad attempts to talk to Yam, she notices her aggressive behavior. Yam then orders Yi to come and give her a massage. And when Yam says she can't talk to her like that, Yam tells her to get out of her face. Just then, their mother arrives, and Yam tells her that Yad is forcing her to go outside. And when she refused, Yad became furious and yelled at her. Buyan scolds Yad, asking why she is asking her sick sister to go out. Yad and Yi then step outside, where Yi reveals that when she woke up last night, Yad had turned around, and she was staring right at her with a scary expression. Yi demonstrates by drawing the expression on the ground. Later, as Buyan and Hung prepare to leave for a trip lasting one night, she asks Yad to take care of her sisters in her absence. After they leave, Yak asks his brothers if anything unusual happened while he was away. Yas informs him that the doctor said Yam was fine, but she is getting worse. Just then, Yad joins them and tells Yak that she heard strange voices in the middle of the night. She couldn't make it out, but it sounded like a woman's voice, eerie and high-pitched whispering in the darkness. That night, at night, at night, at night, 
Yak tells Yad that Mun also heard the voice she was talking about. However, he didn't told what it was, but simply said that it's back. Later, Yad wakes up to a sound and notices that Yam is heading somewhere. As she tries to follow her, she hears the same voice again, causing her to faint. However, she wakes up biting her own hand. She then rushes to her brother's room, but finds that they are not there. Then, she hurries to Yi's room upon hearing her screams, and finding her terrified, she tries to calm her down. Yad tells Yi that she has to go outside to look for Yam, and asks her to hide in a closet. As Yad steps outside, she encounters her brothers who are searching for an intruder. Yod instructs her to go back inside, but suddenly she spots a woman there, prompting Yak to quickly shoot at her. But the woman disappears, and then they locate Yam and bring her inside to safety. After a while, Yad asks them what just happened. Yak reveals that earlier, while the three of them were drinking outside, he noticed Yam heading somewhere. However, when he started following her, he suddenly felt dizzy. Somehow, he managed to control himself and went out with his brothers in search of Yam. That's when they saw the mysterious woman, but she disappeared the next moment. As they continued searching for her, they found Yam, who turned towards them and fainted. When he saw the woman again, he shot at her, but she disappeared once more. Then, suddenly, they saw her on the other side, only for her to disappear again. Yak asks Yad if there's something she can tell him, to which she reveals that she has also seen that woman at an abandoned shrine under a weeping fig. Just then, they get startled as the door opens on its own, but when they don't see anyone there, Yak concludes that someone is messing with their heads. The next day, Yak and Yad discuss that what happened is exactly what occurred with Nart, but Yak reassures her that they will search for a cure. Yad suggests telling Dad and Mom about last night, but Yak responds that no one will believe them. After this, when Yad goes to Yam, she notices that she has not eaten. Yad mentions that Yak has given her some money so she can bring Yam something to eat, but Yad asks if she can also come with her. Yad leaves, instructing Yam to wash up. However, after a while, we see the old scary woman sneaking into Yam's room. She suddenly appears next to Yad, attacks her, and makes her fall to the ground. Outside, Yad attempts to convince their mom to let Yam go out with her, but suddenly the radio goes out of tune. Meanwhile, the old woman breaks off a tooth from Yam and eats it. Just then, Bunyan and Yad hear Yam scream, and they are shocked to see the old woman on top of her. Bunyan pulls her back and then throws her out of the house, and Yad gets horrified after seeing this. Later, Yak brings home Sergeant Paffin for their help, and Bunyan informs Paffin that Shui was here. Paffin enters Yam's room to check on her and asks her what happened. However, Yam seems to be a bit changed, and she spits something on his face. Bunyan asks her, why did she do that? But Yam tells Paffin to get out or she will eat him whole. Paffin asserts that he knows she is Chui, but Yam laughs at him and insists that her name is not Chui, but Yam. Paffin then discloses to Yak a rumor suggesting that Chui has invoked ancient spirits, practiced black magic, and become insane. Together, they embark on a search for Chui and eventually find her in her hut engaged in a ritual, and Yak kicks over her bowl. He then asks her what she is doing, but she responds by sticking her black tongue, causing Yak to leave her and retreat. Moments later, Chui strikes her head on a bamboo, piercing through, resulting in her death. Poffin informs Yak that these malevolent spirits require a host body. They hunt for prey at night, returning to the host during the day. Yak questions why the spirit allowed Chui to end her own life prompting Paffin to clarify that the spirit seeks a more suitable vessel, requiring a tooth to facilitate possession of the host, and Yam is the new host. Yak returns home and asks Yad and Yi to sleep in his room, and he will stand guard. Now at 2 am, he tells his brothers that if nothing happens in four hours, it means Yam is not the host. After a while, that strange, eerie voice starts echoing throughout their house, due to which all of them become alarmed. Yak tells his brothers to place their hands on the fire, but before they can do so, they fall asleep. Yad bites her hand, and at that moment, Yam emerges from her room, leading Yak to realize that it is Yam producing that voice. 
He rushes toward a lamp in an attempt to keep himself awake, but the moment the lamp extinguishes, he succumbs to sleep as well. Shortly thereafter, Yad comes out of her room and attempts to awaken Yak. As he gets up, she informs him that Yam has once again ventured into the backyard. He rouses his brothers and instructs Yad to lock herself in her room and not open it no matter what. They then rush outside to confront the entity, and only then their parents also come there. Yak tells them that Yam is possessed, and only then do they hear an eerie laugh, which makes them alert. And when Yak asks the entity to show itself, her mother warns him not to tempt it. But Yak does not listen to her, Hung asks Yak to hand him the gun. But Yak replies that he knows nothing, and all he cares about is his work. Hung slaps him, asserting that he is his father and that ghosts are not real. However, suddenly, stones begin to rain down on their roof. Yak instructs his parents to start a fire and not let it go out, and stay here in case Yam returns. And then, the three brothers split up to search for Yam. Yak heads to the farm, where he hears someone calling his name, but he doesn't see anyone there. He realizes that the entity is playing with him, and suddenly, it grabs his hand and disappears. After some time, suddenly, he fires at a figure, but to his horror, it turns out to be his mother, and realizing that he has made a grave mistake, he gets into a shock. His mother begins to laugh, revealing herself as the entity. As it advances toward him, Yak flees for his life, reloading his gun in a panic. He finally comes out of the farm and starts waiting for the entity to come out to confront it. Just then, his real mother appears, but Yad stops him from firing and explains that she is their mother. Meanwhile, there's a knock on the door, with someone pretending to be Yam. Yad, however, sees that her family members are on the other side and they've found Yam. As Yi moves to open the door, Yad stops her just in time. Noting that Yam never calls her Yad, the entity responds, threatening to open the door itself if she won't comply. Following this, the entity begins to insert its hand through a crack to open the door, and as she unlocks the door, both Yod and Yi are filled with horror. However, their mother knocks on the door, urging them to open it, and the entity disappears from there. The next day, Paffin brings Mr. Puth with him to help the family. While they search the area, Mr. Puth notices a giant bamboo grove nearby, where Yam had collapsed. Now, after a while, Yak tells Puth that they should go inside and check on Yam, but Puth says he is not done looking around. This makes Yak furious, to which Puth says he needs to control his anger, as a challenge is coming his way soon to test him. Now before entering the house, Puth draws a talisman above the entrance. He then confronts the entity inside Yam and orders her to get out, but the entity pretends to be Yam and asks her mom to come to her. However, Yak stops their mom. Puth then instructs Yak to hold his sister tightly, and as Puth touches her forehead, Yam screams and begins shaking violently, pleading for her mother's help. Bunyan is unable to see the condition of her daughter, and she starts moving forward to help her. The others try to stop her, and Yak explains that Yam is possessed, but Bunyan slaps him and reassures Yam that she is there for her. Both Yak and Puth are shocked by Bunyan's behavior, and meanwhile, Hung returns with a stick and instructs Yam to get up. In a demonic voice, Yam refuses. And this prompts Hung to strike her. But Boon Yan intervenes, taking the blow on herself. Puth then instructs everybody to leave the room and let Boon Yan with her daughter. Once outside, he informs them that the entity is weakened during the day and will go dormant for a while. He then instructs them to cut down the bamboo and to save their sister. The three brothers comply. Just then, Hung arrives there, and Puth explains to him that whatever is hidden inside will be revealed. Hung admits that his daughter is acting strange, but he would be a fool to blindly trust everything Puth says, and then he asks him to leave. Puth insists that it's not just his daughter's behavior that's concerning, but Hung himself is also acting strangely. Puth reveals that the spirit is a master manipulator and can easily sway an untrained mind. He acknowledges that Hung is strict and disciplined, but he knows he will never harm his family like he did back there. Hung understands and allows his sons to cut down the bamboo, and soon after, a very foul smell emanates from inside the grove. Undeterred, Yak enters the bush to investigate, and to their horror, 
They discover various organs beneath it. Puth explains that these organs link the entity's soul to the host, and they must burn them. Just then, Yam screams and begins moving toward those organs, but her siblings stop her from reaching them. Puth then applies something on her forehead, causing the entity to get weak, and they all make Yam lie down on the ground. Yak and Yas then set those organs on fire, and with a demonic scream, Yam falls unconscious. Puth instructs Yak to take his sister to the doctor immediately because a strong mind is essential to survive this journey. On their way to the hospital, Puth explains that normal spirits typically target scared children because they are easy prey. However, this spirit preys on healthy individuals with no illness or injury. He asks if Yam has faced death before, to which they disclose that she had malaria as an infant and they had nearly given up hope. But miraculously, she recovered, and since then, she has rarely fallen ill. Puth explains that's why, when the spirit found Yam, it abandoned Shui and possessed her instead. Yak asks about Nart, to which Puth responds that the spirit saw her merely as prey. Puth then tells Yak to later use the sacred bullets he gave him, and that his instincts will tell him when to use them. Just then, Bunyan alerts Puth that Yam is burning, prompting Puth to check on her. But the next moment, Yak is shocked to see that everyone else has disappeared. Undeterred, Yak continues driving, and as he goes further, he encounters many sinister spirits trying to stop him. But he faces them bravely and keeps driving the car. Meanwhile, something drips on Yad, and when she looks up, she is horrified to see Nart's ghost, which Yod and Pafin also witness. Pafin instructs them to close their eyes, explaining that if they don't see them, the ghosts won't see them either. After a while, Yak sees his family standing in the middle of the road, and meanwhile, Nart's ghost begins moving toward Yad and the others. Yak increases the speed of his car and shoots at the spirits, causing the spirit to disappear. At this moment, Nart's ghost also disappears, and Yak sees his family back in the car. However, soon after, an eerie whispering begins echoing in the air, causing everyone to fall asleep. Yak and Puth struggle to keep themselves from succumbing to sleep, and when Puth attempts to control Yam, she bites off his finger. Then, she takes control of the steering wheel and crashes the car into a tree. After a while, when Yak wakes up, he finds that Puth is dead, and all his family members are lying unconscious outside. He then comes out to confront the entity, but is shocked to see that Yam has the gun. The entity tells him that it only wanted his sister but his family won't mind its business, so now it will devour them all. Then, she shoots and kills Pafin, remarking that she hasn't been with a family as fun as his. She then asks him whom it should kill next, and when she puts the gun to Yad's head, Yak dares it to shoot him instead. The entity leaves Yad and moves toward Yak, stating how it can't refuse such a request. However, before it can shoot him, he acts swiftly, and Yad throws Puth's sword towards him. He stabs Yam's hand with it, causing her to fall to her knees and vomit a black substance before collapsing. The entity then appears in its true, horrifying form and moves toward Yak in anger. However, he shoots it with a sacred bullet, causing it to stagger back. With determination, he puts the gun in its mouth and pulls the trigger, ultimately killing it. The scene then shifts to the hospital, where Yam wakes up with no memory of what transpired. Meanwhile, Yos expresses gratitude to Yak for saving their family, to which Yak humbly replies that they owe it to Pafin and Mr. Puth, without whom they wouldn't have survived. Yak also reveals that their mother wrote to him about the strange rumors and urged him to come home. Later that night, Yad notices that something is wrong with Yam. Yam breaks one of her teeth and shows it to Yad, who becomes terrified upon realizing that she is still possessed. Yam falls back onto the bed, and then her stomach begins to bloat, mirroring what happened to Nart. Her family rushes in upon hearing her screams, and to their horror, they watch Yam succumb to death before their eyes. After a few days, furious with this incident, Yak destroys the abandoned shrine beneath the weeping fig. He then sets it on fire and declares that this is not the end, and the movie ends here. Thanks for facing the frights with us. If you survived this video, drop a like, 
summon that subscribe button and brace yourself for more horror. Until next time, stay spooked.